There's eight islands off the coast of California. San Nicolas is the one that's the furthest out to sea. It's uh, 60 miles from the nearest point on the mainland. If you read all the old historical accounts, they always complain either about the wind or the fog. You never see anybody talking about how wonderful the weather is. For the previous 25 years, I worked uh, for the U.S. Navy on San Nicolas Island as the archaeologist. When I first started working there, I really didn't know much about the Lone Woman story at all, to tell you the truth. But I started reading about it, and people would ask me questions that I couldn't answer. So I did some more reading and quickly found out that there's so many conflicting versions of the story that nobody really knew the truth. So I kind of started down this path of trying to unravel what the real true story is. The thought of being alone on the island while so many suns rose from the sea and went slowly back into the sea filled my heart with loneliness. I had not felt so lonely before because I was sure the ship would return. Now my hopes were dead. Now I was really alone. The Lone Woman has been known by a number of names. Of course, we tragically don't know her real name, the name which she was called by her parents. She's often been termed the Lone Woman or alternatively the Lost Woman. She's also been known as Juana Maria. This was the name given to her by the Spanish Padres upon her conditional baptism. And then of course, Scott O'Dell chooses a third name, Carana. The story of the Lone Woman is a fascinating story and Scott O'Dell wrote this novel that today is required reading for most every fourth grader in the country. So kids, we're gonna start reading this book today. It's called Island of the Blue Dolphins. When I was a child and reading Island of the Blue Dolphin, I knew I was Gabrielle O'Keefe of descent, but I was not able to put that together, that her story was related to my tribe. Scott O'Dell first wrote the narrative and he had some good friends look at it and said, it's very good and you've written a children's story. Now this was a surprise to Scott. He had only ever written for adults. And it's the story of this girl who ends up being left alone on the island when she's not much older than you. Well, one thing we can say is that Scott O'Dell did a pretty good job of not only setting the landscape, but also of capturing what it would be like for a person to live alone on that island. Even though apparently he had never stepped foot on the island. This upper window was the spot where Scott O'Dell's desk sat. So as you can see from this environment, he's far from the ocean. But in his head, he was right there with Karana on San Nicolas Island. I didn't start with Scott O'Dell's version. I started with some of the actual accounts from that time period first. I can see most of where Scott O'Dell's story comes from. He just didn't have all the, the knowledge we have today. My own research that sort of gets us to the story of who Juana Maria was and who her people were is our work at SNI 25, which is a village site that we've called the Tule Creek site. If you read Island of the Blue Dolphins, the very beginning describes Corral Harbor. This is the village described by Scott O'Dell. What he didn't know is he was right. It's a huge story, it's a big story. It's not just about this one woman, but she's sort of the focal point. She was out there on San Nicolas Island. The Nicolaino were the brunt of two huge waves of explorers and entrepreneurs. The Spanish were coming up from the south and wanted to colonize California. And it also marks the period when the Russian fur traders contracted with Kodiak Island sea otter hunters to come to the Channel Islands and use their kayaks, use their hunting technology to go after sea otters for the pelts for trade back to the old world. I do not know what happened first, whether it was my father who raised his fist against the hunter whose path he barred. Whether it was this man who stepped forward with a bale of pelts on his back and shoved my father aside. It all happened so quickly that I could not tell one act from the other. The lone woman was on the island when the massacre occurred. This was something that we discovered details of in our search through Russian documents. There was a murder of one of those Alaska native hunters by the Nicolaino. And in response, the Alaska native hunters really went wild and 
nearly exterminated all the males on the island. Which results in the population of the island getting smaller and smaller and smaller down to where there's hardly anybody left. So in 1835, a boat named the Peoris Nada, which is often translated as better than nothing, set sail for San Nicolas Island to collect the remaining islanders and bring them to San Pedro. Right now, we have documentary evidence for eight people who came off of the island. When they got on that ship, I'm sure they had no idea what was in store for them. And if they could foresee that, there's no way they would have gone. She is left behind. We know that. That's a fact. We know she's left behind. Why the exact circumstances of her being left behind are open to a lot of debate. Part of the story is that she went back to retrieve her child. I think in reading the various accounts, she just did not want to go with the group when they left. She hid, and she wanted to make sure she was going to be safe. She didn't want to go anywhere where there's going to be more conflict. What would you choose as an author? You know, your job is to tell the best story. So in his rendition, Karan is on board the ship. It's a little brother as opposed to a, a young child. So at the last minute, the ship will not turn back because of a brewing storm. She takes a dramatic leap overboard, swims back to rescue her brother.